But the best part about painting at work is you can still get work done and talk at the same time. So if my boss is watching, I'm still getting work done, boss. It's funny how it's just it's just the whole thing. I barely even like notice that when it's everywhere, it's just what do you mean us? That's not anything I'm talking about. There's no such thing as that. Yeah, well, don't let any man take your crown. So even even the the topic itself, even just the word alone, just being mentioned is like reminds you of Corona, the virus, and but it has other meanings too because it's not just you know I got a I got a crown. Which is when you get a new tooth, you get it, you get the first old one plucked out, and then you get a, a screw in there, a crown, and then you have a new tooth now. You know, because I didn't particularly brush my teeth as much as I should have when I was a kid because, well, I just didn't feel like I had to. So I know that thing where you can't tell anybody how to live. They're going to do it on their own. The more you try to force somebody, the more they're going to go against you. That's why you got to learn how to just stop feeling other people's pain. Let them experience what they have to because they're being ran by a spirit that blinds them and you see the blindfolders, but you also know that there's nothing you can do. Something's getting ready to jump off. Is it going to be physical? Is it physically going to happen? Or is it a behind the scenes? Uh, Jockey for position. I said earlier in the video, I, feel like, well, I just feel like I'm getting warmed up, so I'll keep yapping on. So I have nothing else to do besides. Sometimes I, I mean if if you're able to pay attention to how the world works, who's running it, the mentality behind those that are running it. how they communicate and what they're telling you. If you can catch on to that, man, I mean, you know, I wish that I knew how to do that because I'm just living in a delusional world, ultimately by myself. You're just, you're by yourself in this world. Until you finally get to like meet, meet people that are like-minded, people that appreciate what you're saying, 
people that can't wait to meet you too. Like that thing. Because other than that, if I didn't have that hope, I wouldn't be talking anymore. What's the point? Who am I talking to? I know how you can't convince anybody of anything. Why would you even want to, first of all? It's such a, a freaking hassle. Trying to get people to listen. Trying to, it's like the birth pains. Pain to be delivered. How do you deliver the truth to anybody without going through birth pains? When they finally listen and they hear you out and they and they apply it and you see results, well, that's the birth. You forget about the argument that got you there because a lot of us have to be argued with until we finally realize, oh, wait, that was my uh, fault. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Because your ego... Truly, your ego. Some people act like they don't have egos. What they do. But that word alone, ego. When you get rid of your ego, when you're from the inside and you put away your self-preservation for whatever it is, position that you're taking, whoever you were told that you are, because you got to find it out yourself. If you're a saint or if you're a sinner, are you part of the group that you wanted to bring on the Messiah? So what you had to do was be as evil as you possibly can, because if you're as evil as possible and you're running the planet and you're able to show these things, then you just might bring out the Messiah. And then when you do that, you'll try to take claim that that's your son because, well, you created it. Yeah. However, God told you that he would get here. So, don't take credit too much, even though it's partially right. Because if you created enough BS in this world for the Messiah to see it, then that would be equivalent to Elijah rising up and, like, he didn't really know who King Ahab was or Jezebel. He just knew that God put into his heart a desire to go find people that are responsible for the things that were happening in the world at that time. And maybe somebody told him who, who uh, King Ahab was, or maybe just found out on his own somehow by searching the land, asking around. In all likelihood, that's what it really was, because that makes more sense. But it would have been easier if somebody probably just told him, like, yo, you need to go to that dude right there and tell him, tell his, uh, tell his wife that she's going to get eaten by the dogs. Just tell her that. And see, see how well it's going to go with them there, uh, Elijah. Oh, yeah, and by the way, go to all of his false prophets and expose all of them. And, and then... When it's you, verse 450, tell them that, you know what? I'm sorry. The odds are, it's not even fair for you guys, so can you just dump water all over my entire altar? But let me fix it first by myself before I do that because it's broken. And then, um, and then go ahead. Pray to your God. Let, let fire come down from heaven. And just wait. And then they ask him what, where their God is. Like, what, did he take a trip or something? You know, he didn't get back to you? Yep.
but at the same time, there's a there's a well-known Elijah on this planet right now. And there's probably another well-known Elijah, one for each side, each side's own interpretation as to how certain groups are going to believe what it is, like Christ in you, meaning the actual spirit of Christ only, and then the living Christ in you with the host body system. And either either uh, concealed and, uh, or completely the entire system where I mean, look, if you want, you could probably produce the mystery new Doritos cheese from just living on, just being self-sustained. Self-sustained, it's just you, and you always have this, like, sparkle in your eyes, and it's, it's just magnificent how you love life in that in that way because you're just always feeling good and that's yeah you know, that's what that's what life is all about people just want to feel good it's hard to feel good though when you need to work hard for a living yeah. it'd be nice to retire right around 45 this year like June 20 being the final the final year that I have to get up I mean yeah I'm helping my boss out I'm sure he appreciates it but it's just a job this is just a job. If I was making fiberglass hoods and designing it, that wouldn't be a job to me. If I didn't, even if I didn't get paid to do it, like if I could just make them, my bills are paid, like my rent, I wouldn't really have to move to Florida. Per se, I could just take vacations, stay here and just Retire. What kind of system is this, man? You're born into it. You have no clue what you're doing here. Who you are, why you're here, what the purpose of life is. Uh, but you know that you have to work if you want things, and other people are greedy. And they'll always have plenty, but not share. And then you die, uh, but hopefully you can retire when you, like when if you're still able to walk, like in the park. If you can still walk in the park and enjoy the time, like if you and your wife, if like she's still alive, then hopefully you worked hard enough for Caesar, and he gives you back some of the money that. You earn, but it's his, uh, it's his gig, so you accepted it. You accepted the note, it's a debt note, and so this is what you get. You gotta work for it. There's an easier way, of course. You just have to, you just, you, just, you, know, you gotta be quiet, all right? Yeah, be quiet. Just, 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 just. But man, oh man. Isn't life just grand for those that don't actually have to work? Let's just say your job is to be on a computer and your assignment is literally 
uh, to watch YouTube channels and keep tabs. It could be a good a good gig. I mean, I wouldn't mind doing it. If my bills are paid. I pay attention. I already pay attention to people. I accuse them of people that run this planet or have say in knowing what's going to happen at the very minimum. I don't want to be dogmatic about things because I have been in the past. I truly don't know. But I am willing to take a, a stab at it and say that whoever I've been giving the most attention to throughout my YouTube career, that would be who I think runs the planet or else I would have found somebody else. Now, there's also jockeying for position too. Because it's like, well, who's the real deal? Is it, is it the twin system over there? Is it the twin serpents? Or is it the singularity of two and one? Is it two witnesses in one body? Or is it two separate people? And there's two separate people. Are they legitimate? Or are they the pretenders? Because there are two definite legitimate contenders for this, uh, th this world as the world turns soap opera. That's all it is, it's a soap opera. You, you just happen to be mixed in with the people that are responsible for creating soap operas. But I have a couple, couple of uh, candidates that could possibly have something to do with the things that are happening on this planet. And you may never even know. They may never expose that to you. Or you're getting ready to find out that it was true somehow. But what if you already know that it's true? And you're just one of them that's hiding the truth. Well, then you already know it's true. But there's also, I gotta remember, there's people that just don't really know. And there's other people that stick up for those people as if they're not. No, uh -oh, it's not him. No, it's not the same bear. It's not, it's not the same bear. I mean, it's, I mean, it's close. It, it's not the same one. Right, it doesn't even matter if it is or it isn't. It, it's outside of my, it's across the street. To my neighbors. The neighbors that they do unusual tactics. I, I'll tell you. I, I would like if I didn't know any better, if I didn't know any better, I would say that my next door neighbors, that they are my next door neighbors. And they just want to be my neighbor. Won't you be? Won't you please be my neighbor? Hello, Robin. <laughs> We're your neighbors. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> oh, man. That's, that's going to get it. Wait, wait until he leaves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, what do you want to do? Move Bowie's bed. Yeah. She'll definitely know that one. Uh, the, the learning lessons. The learning lessons. Well, can't say that I don't. Expect visitors. I cannot say that I don't feel that part. What kind of visitors? Oh, visitors. A few, probably. A few visitors. Because eventually, uh, something takes place that, well, let's just say, if you know where they'll be, then you'll be where they are.
and that's the way of seeing what's what. But at the same time, at the same time, there's always going to be a couple imposters. And those imposters are going to, well, they know the Bible inside and out. They know exactly who they are and what they're doing and why they're trying it. And it's just what they have to do. So, and then there really is, there really is a couple people out there that have really good uh, intentions. But the, fir but the first group doesn't. The first group doesn't have good intentions. The second group, I mean the, the legitimate group, small group, has good intentions. There's another group, but they don't really have good intentions. Sometimes things hit close to home. But where is your home? Is this your home? Is this my home? Was I born here? I think so. At least that's what they told my mom and dad, that I was born in uh, Bartow Hospital at 11.30 p.m., half hour to midnight, June 28, 1976. 44 years living on this planet. Do I have a twin? Maybe, maybe they took my twin, and my twin is evil, and my twin is after me, dressed up in a mask, acting like somebody else. You know, that would be something else, too. We all have our own evil twin doppelganger. Before I was just switched as a baby, they put me there, took the, took the other kid, I was born somewhere else, and then they put me in the hospital. And I'm like, here's your kid. Here, boy. My doctor's name was Emmanuel. I didn't even know that that was his name until I looked. Probably last year. That's why I got that tag because it was pretty cool. I mean, that's not why I got the tag, but it's it matches the reason why I got it because I was delivered by Emmanuel. That guy, but he was just a doctor. But it's a cool name. I like that name. It reminds me of doing it yourself. That's what it reminds me. Manual, man, the man, manual shift. You do it yourself. You praying? You praying to God? Are you? Are you praying in Jesus' name? Are you saying Amen at the end? Are you? Do you? Kneel down and close your eyes and bow your head when you talk to God. Or do you just think to the Spirit that's what you? And the evil one, the negative one, is always there too. Constantly there. Your negative energy will never go away. You just need to learn how to channel it. Turn it down, silence it. Shut it up. Pluck it out. You don't pluck every thought. You just pluck the ones that you know are going to torment you. And so why bother? Why bother? Pluck it up. Beat it. Because all you're doing is, if when you're plucking up, you're turning down. When you're plucking up in the air, the weed, you're turning down the volume. Pluck up, turn down. Turn down, pluck up. Pluck it up, turn it down. Whatever you do, shut it up. Shut up the scaredy cat inside you, the bully. Because the bully is the biggest puss. Because the bully fears truth and fears that you'll wake up to it. And because if you realize what the truth is, all you gotta do is just be meek from here on out and you'll inherit the earth. But if you're doing the other thing, if you're still working for the group and you're still doing, you're still going all the way through, I guess I'll, I'll see what happens with that, right? You'll see, Rob. 
you'll see what's going to happen to you. We have it all planned out. We know Ahab and Jezebel. <laughs> now, they're actually, we work for them. So you're screwed, Robin, because we know, we, we can discern. We know damn well that Jezebel, she's still alive and kicking. And Ahab, he's, he's mad because you keep mocked. I mean, because we're, we're getting mocked by that spirit. But do you realize that you only get mocked because... I mean, in the Bible, not you per se, whoever is a false prophet, you know who you are. You falsely prophesy. You can turn and repent and be forgiven. Or just stay prideful and not and think that that Jezebel wasn't already slain with Ahab. Why do you think Ahab allowed the mocking of his employees? Because Elijah knew that he was entertaining angels quite aware. And again, there's a second Elijah. There's the first one that everybody knows. And then maybe there's like another type, because remember you have to do with the twin system. And then when the real Elijah, the spirit shows it like the truth, not the not the acting part of it. Even though it happens literally, but the spiritual end happens as well by a, a physical person. Not as well known, obviously. So the, the slaying, the slaying already happened. And the rain is about to pour down. It's not an actual rain of water. It's not, nobody's going to get drowned or flooded out. It's just the rain of Christ because Elijah, when he gets, when he gets called up to heaven, then Elisha gets the double portion. Every story has just visualize Jesus being being in every single prophet story in the end. Like that spirit is there. And then there's a physical Jesus man. But the spirit is in the same stories. All of them. Christ gets crucified. Elijah goes up, up to heaven. Daniel sees two witnesses, Gabriel and Michael. Now, is he having a conversation with himself? Are these spirits actual people that he has communication with because either way King Ned is impressed by the ability to interpret the dreams that he had and in a dream it's not just one actual interpretation either because you'll have one group that's that's going for the iron mix with miry clay, and that's the AI uh, mixed in, inside of the body. And then iron, because iron's the one that smashes things into pieces. So the iron mixed with miry clay, I've always seen that as the, well, it's the true believers mixed in with the, the weaker. So it's true believers, the iron is mixed with the clay, the fleshly man. It's partly brittle partly strong 
but with AI, it's also partly brittle and partly strong. Because if you have bones that are metal rods, and then you're mixed with moderately clay. But you may be soulless. And the amazing thing is that a soul can literally be placed inside of an AI creation. Because soul is simply life, of the spirit. You have the spirit of life that can enter into somebody that is just completely deaf, dumb, and blind. Then they see the truth, they hear the truth, then they start to practice the truth. Then the truth is just all they want to, it's all they want to hear and talk about. You don't want to hear stories. You don't want to hear the, the BS nonsense. Just want people to be real. If you know your role, then admit it. Just like Jacob admitted it. But there's also going to be somebody playing Jacob, acting like he's admitting that that's who he is, when it's really Esau trying to pretend that he's Jacob. Trying to trick his father, because who was the hairy one? One of them was hairy, and, then, and he gave the birthright. And, uh, but he got tricked, I think he got tricked by Jacob, right? I forget the story, I, I, I gotta brush up on my Bible. And that's another thing. If I grew up like a Pharisee or a Sadducee, I would know, I would know the Bible inside and out. Not that I would actually know the Bible, but I would know the stories. But that's what we're, we're missing. Certain people have the spirit, but they're missing the story because they don't quite understand. And then others, they, they know the story, they just don't have the spirit because they just, they can't quite understand. When the Elijah group of Elijahs, the, it's like the 144, everybody's playing the same role. That's why.